Hello and welcome. So today I want to talk to you about uh, the differences between uh, an Apple M1 device and an NVIDIA uh, Jetson uh, Xavier. So right now you can get something like an M1 Mac Mini uh, for I think under $600 from the refurbished store, the Apple refurbished store. And right now this NVIDIA uh, Xavier is a rare item. You can, it's really difficult to get one. I think you have to buy them from scalpers and uh, I th this one on Amazon is selling for over $3,000. So it's an expensive device, and if you look down here, you'll see that uh, it has more cores, and it has almost double the uh, performance. And so this is at one sixth the price, less than one sixth, maybe one seventh or one eighth the price. Uh, so it seems that you know, simply from a price performance point of view, the M1 uh, Mac Mini is a tremendous value. And let's take a look at uh, what can be done with this. Within Xcode, which is something that's free for anyone who buys a Mac, uh, you can get this Create ML uh, program. And let me do a new project here. You can uh, train these systems for image classification, object detection, style transfer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All of these kinds of things without any real knowledge of machine learning. So if you're an absolute newbie to this, you can still train models, which is rather amazing. I'm not sure that NVIDIA is going to be as simple. Uh, and then, of course, there are uh, sources out on the internet, I should have opened a page for that, uh, where you can get pre-trained models and then uh, run them for inference uh, in your programs. And they're very, very fast. Now, when we were looking back here at the uh, the teraflops, this is for running on the Apple GPU. But the Apple uh, M1 also has a CPU, and it has something called the Apple Neural Engine, the A-N-E. And when you're doing inference, which means when you're trying to predict something using a model, not training, but predicting, uh, it's very fast, and you can use any of those devices, uh, the uh, CPU, the GPU, the CPU is actually faster. The eight-core CPU actually runs faster. Uh, and I believe that's because it, it's able to use the ANE. Now, the, the ANE, the Apple Neural Engine, is a 16-core engine. So I think that uh, it doesn't have 10, 20, four cores, it actually has 20, 48 cores. So with the Apple device, you get the, you get the eight core CPU, the eight core GPU, and you get the 16 core neural engine. With the Xavier, you get, uh, I don't know how many cores there are in the, uh, if it's a four core or a six core CPU, uh, with multi-threading, uh, and you get the uh, eight-core GPU. And that's it. You don't get an ANE uh, with the uh, NVIDIA device. And for inference, it will perform as high as 11 teraflops per second. So uh, it's really it really is an amazing value. Now, 
the other thing we can look at here is uh, for the Jetson, these are some of the things that are available. Uh, classification, object detection, segmentation, pose estimation. And these are all things that can be done also on the Apple device. Uh, uh, Apple has uh, Docker containers, no problem there. Uh, Apple has had uh, TensorFlow for the M1 I, almost since its inception uh, back in 2020. Uh, they just recently got a version uh, of PyTorch that's specifically compiled for the M1. And uh, what else here? Now, so you can do OpenCV on both devices. Uh, I don't know if you can run the robot operating system on the Mac. I haven't looked into it. I, my guess is that you probably can but I, I can't be certain about that. Uh, I don't know what this Isaac SDK is. Uh, now, one thing, one thing about this, Jetson device is that it's small. And so, if you put it inside of a robot or you are designing a, a self-driving car and you're going to stick this under the hood someplace. It's a very small device. Now the, uh, the Mac Mini is really a desktop or a laptop, depending on which model you buy. Uh, however, it is very low power. So it's actually, I think, 14 watts, uh, which is less than half the wattage required by the, uh, the Xavier. This takes 30 watts. So, from that perspective, it would go into something like a car very easily. Uh, the difference is that the case is uh, probably not the best case for that. Although, I don't know. The, the uh, Jensen Xavier, I don't know how that mounts. Uh, the M1 uh, does uh, have the ability to be VESA mounted. And so it's possible that one could base a mountain inside of an automobile, for example, uh, and use it. It certainly would draw less power from a battery on something like a robot. So uh, all in all, I have to say that it's uh, for machine learning, I think it's a much better uh, purchase for the average uh, enthusiast. Uh, and of course, if you are a serious data scientist, uh, it's very possible that one of the larger Macs, the Mac Studio or the uh, M1 Max, uh, might be uh, sufficient for it. You know, that's <laughs> that's going to depend on the size of the models. If you're if you're trying to uh, train a 175 billion parameter model, uh, certainly the uh, Apple M1 is is not the machine you're going to use. You're going to be using some sort of cluster. Uh, but that's also the case for the Nvidia Jetson. Uh, these are, I would say that these are not s machines for the serious data scientist, uh, unless of course you are embedding it in another device. Uh, for the most part, the people who are going to be buying these are going to be uh, enthusiasts and students. And I would say that, uh, that the M1 Mac is right now a far better deal. Uh, I think you can do as much or more in machine learning on the, on the M1 Mac. Uh, so if you disagree with me, please uh, comment uh, and uh, let me know why, uh, you know, if I'm missing the point or 
uh, something like that. Uh, but I don't think I am. In any case, I thank you for watching me, and I hope that you find this helpful.